Hello subscribers. Been a long time since I uploaded a video. Uh, been an even longer time since I uploaded a Banda tutorial. And I may have some coming, may not. Life unfortunately and with the virus is busy. But what is today's video? Well, today's video is a product demo. No, you can't see it. Well, you can see a little bit of it, but uh, not from this distance. Uh, we are testing the Sullivan Torrified Black Rim in this banjo. And this banjo, what is this exactly? Well, uh, if you can see the inlay block there, the master tone inlay block, it says Blackjack. This is a 2007 original left-handed, no, that's not a trick of the camera, left-handed original factory Blackjack came this way from Gibson. Uh, neck was made by uh, Eric Sullivan and a fellow whose name shall be, uh, shall go unnamed uh, here locally. He did the profiling work on the neck. Uh, this banjo is nearly all original. The head, the armrest, tension hoop, uh, flange, resonator, neck, and uh, fifth string peg are all original to the banjo, including 95% of the frets. Um, has a speed neck done by myself, but that is the only thing that's been done to it. The, like I said, most of the frets are still original, and the tuners have been replaced with some original uh, pancake tuners. Yes, they are original pre-war pancake tuners, but other than that, is completely stock. Have a 1.9 gram 656 old stock Snuffy Smith bridge, and uh, of course the tailpiece is not original, but the only thing that's different in this banjo is the rim. A little bit before we uh, demo the sound of the of the banjo, I've tried so many different tone rings in this banjo, like a lot of banjo players, particularly fans of Earl Scruggs and uh, three finger style bluegrass playing. Uh, there's uh, there's a unofficial or perhaps not so unofficial uh, idea that the the tone ring is a huge uh, portion of the quality sound and a. 1930s style master tone banjo or replica banjo and the tone ring is important but uh, as as this demo will show the tone ring is not nearly as important as the rim and uh, I can say that with some confidence since I've had over five different tone rings in this banjo I've had two Hubers I've had a Burl Isle I've had a Sloan and I've had the original Gibson ring uh, from the factory in this banjo it's a we're not sure exactly what it is. Uh, could be the Sullivan ring, it could be the mystery ring, but either way, after all these years of, of testing different tone rings and whatnot and never really having any of them make a very great difference in the sound of the banjo, uh, Eric convinced me to try one of his rims. And this is the result. <laughs> now something lower. Banjo is uh, tuned between G-sharp and A, head tension that is, give you an idea of the uh, note relative to 440 calibration pitch, there's a high G-sharp here, relative to A, So more of what I would call a true pre-war setup, those of you who've either spoken with or had the very great honor to play any of J.D. Crow's original flathead bandas will know that 
he keeps the heads tighter than G-sharp. Fairly common to keep a master tone style banjo tuned to G-sharp. Exactly. Uh, and there's some information about J.D. Crow that suggests that he keeps the banjo head tightened exactly at G-sharp. This is not true. He keeps the heads on most of his pre-wars tighter than that. Some of them at A, in fact. So, like a real master tone banjo, with this block rim, I've noticed that unlike the other two rims I've had in this banjo, a, a factory floor rim and the original Cooperman rim that came with the banjo, which has since been put on the replica shelf, I could never keep the head as tight. I had to keep it around G or below G sharp. Uh, with the same tone ring in this banjo, just changing the rim, same dimensions, everything, just a different type of wood and a different orientation of the wood itself, the head immediately uh, could be tightened substantially more, and the banjo is very deep sounding. A couple of other things I noticed about this banjo that may or may not come across on the audio is the tone difference between the X and Y positions is much, uh, there's, there's much more tone to be found in between the bridge and the neck. Uh, and it, it's, a, it's a much richer difference, not, not as uh, dry and, uh, and the same as it was before. Much more definition there than there used to be. The biggest difference with the rim, however, despite setup factors and, and other things, is mainly the way it sounds. The tone changed but how it plays is the biggest difference. And I, I have to say that my favorite aspect about the banjo now is that it's so much easier to play. And what I mean by that is before with the old rims, which were fairly heavy, sugar maple, three ply, the banjo sounded okay, but it took a lot of force, picking force into the strings to get it to sound okay. This rim, is so sensitive, in fact, you can tell by tapping on certain areas of the, the head, but also when you tap the end of the tailpiece here, may not come across on the video, but the, the tone chamber, the body of the banjo, naturally resonates, even without plucked notes, much more than it, than it did before. And what really this is merely evidence of is how responsive the banjo is. Simply put, you, you do not have to pick very hard to get the sound out of it. In fact, you have to be fairly careful how loud you play to get the sound out of it. I am not playing very loud in the, in the uh, demo uh, songs here, but you can. You can, but you don't need to. And you get a very good volume out of the banjo. It just, you get more volume with less effort. And that is my most favorite thing because if you jam, even if you, even if you re record in the studio, the, the banjo will just be easier to play. You won't have to work as hard at it. I find myself playing it longer than I did without getting tired, without getting any soreness in my wrist. And that's an issue because I have a uh, bone spur on my picking hand, so I gotta be careful. And I uh, just want to leave you here with another song to demo the sound and uh, definitely encourage you to give Eric Sullivan a call. Uh, most of you know that replacement tone rings go anywhere from three to sky's the limit. Uh, this rim can be easily put into a banjo fit to your original parts, whatever they are, pre-war or other, uh, at a very nominal fee, couple hundred uh, easily. And that is at least half to a third of the price of a replica tone ring and like I said at the, at the outset of this video, my goodness, after five different tone rings varying from hundreds to thousands of dollars, it, it's hard to believe that a little $200 uh, wood part could, could change the banjo more than all the expensive tone rings in the world, but don't take my word for it, call Eric Sullivan see and play one of his new American Classic Series banjos and uh, hear the difference for yourself. Cut!